Welcome back. Time now for Talk of the Table. Holiday travel, as anybody knows, something of a nightmare. But now, a labor action by airport workers threatened to make that nightmare even worse. Airport union workers preparing to strike at LAX. They admit they could not have picked a worse day or a busier airport, but that's sort of the point, I guess. Hundreds of union members began a permitted march near the entrance to LA International Air Airport earlier today. The union is in a dispute with the airport services company that no longer has an SEIU contract. Authorities urge flyers to add 90 minutes to their planned airport arrival time and picketing expected coast to coast here from Chicago's O'Hare to JFK in uh, New York and oh, even all the way down to Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Um, we got a Taylor law in New York that says if you're a cop or a firefighter here, you, you can't strike even if you got a legitimate labor beef because you could imperil um, security. I know it's not security, but you don't strike on Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Eve, even if you have leverage here. There's this, this a thing to do and a thing not to do. It's like, I don't know, Andrew, if somebody was going to strike here if you were a utility company at the height of Sandy, right? You don't do that. You, you don't, if you're going to make a point, you don't try and exact it at the time that you're going to hurt the most amount of innocent people that have nothing to do with your labor but, but Richard, But what if you feel that management is not listening to your issues at all? And if you feel you've been back, boxed into a corner and but that you have no choice. But you're still penalizing the consumer. There is a time and a place, exactly. And there is a I time say and a place. channel Ronald Reagan and fire him and get, bring new people every, in there. Every strike affects consumers and every strike inconvenience consumers. But there's degrees. There, there are degrees, but obviously the bigger impact, the bigger cudgel that you're going to have is when those services are most needed, are most wanted, and will, people will be most disappointed. Everybody should have the right to strike unless you're affecting people's safety. Unless you talk cops, firefighters, I understand the exemption. Everybody has the right to strike. Otherwise, how exactly do you show to management how valuable and undervalued okay, your services but, but are? But if I said to you, here are the 10 dates that you can't strike because literally you're going to bottleneck millions of Americans. Would we agree that that's fair? You're going to bottleneck millions of Americans no matter when you do There's that work. high volume action. days and this is the highest volume day of the year, right? So I don't know. I just said instinctively when I said that, but cheap Richie, shot. But they better be careful because it can backfire. boomerang and backfire on them absolutely. and there may be absolutely no public support. And what are the terms that they're trying to negotiate here? I'm pretty sure that they're not too bad, the situation that they have. I, yeah, I know <laughs> folks in the airline industry, they things have not been going well for them. So I'm not even saying right or wrong in this case. I'm just saying the timing, it's more than just rough. I think it's a little cheap, but maybe we agree, disagree. Okay, coming up next. Changing your weight for a rule. Now, fans still can't believe that this skeletal figure right here is the same Matthew McConaughey who just a few months ago looked like this Hollywood star. Suddenly, the guy's dropped 40 pounds here for his next role as a man suffering from AIDS in the 80s. Now, we've seen this before. Christian Bale, he lost 65 pounds for his role in The Machinist. Uh, Robert De Niro, he went the other way. Look at that. Ugh. Uh, he uh, gained a whole lot of weight here. That's when he was Jake LaMotta in The Raging Bull, and this is Jake LaMotta later in life here. I guess my point is, is this a dedication to craft, or is this just people being a little bit too much method here and a little too much art? It's real dedication to craft, and, and if you understand what they're doing as actors, it's to be commended. I mean, they, for example, if they're playing a police officer, and you're giving me that sarcastic look I see there when you're not buying my argument, but... I guess I, I get the thing with McConaughey's an age patient, yeah. but sometimes, like... I, well, look at, just to sort of play devil's advocate here, which I do agree it is a dedication to their craft, and I don't think they should be criticized for it, but look what happened to Heath Ledger, who said that when he went into the role of, as the Joker, that he really had trouble sleeping afterwards, became addicted to a lot of narcotics, and ended up, you know, overdosing and, and losing his life over it. We so also know some that of them, was some that of them was an example of say, extreme right, um, where George it really Lee went too for, far. For uh, Syriana, right? He put on like 30, 40 pounds, and he said never again. He threw his back out and everything else. Nobody would have thought differently of him if he had. You know, if he wasn't the, the fat but, guy, but you know. Thought, but he thought he could play the role better, and and this actually gets me thinking about about fashion models who are constantly taking the weight off, or keeping the weight off, or starving themselves, or doing worse in some cases to try to 
ostensibly do the same thing, which is to fit the role, to fit the image no, that they think they're being hired for. Basis, well, uh, I, you know, I understand. These guys are supposed to be acting, I, understand, I think they're taken a little too seriously. But, but you know, I think, uh, I think a lot of people do. I've certainly been gaining weight for this role, trying to... Doing a I didn't think it's helping. job, by the Camera way. Camera does that 10 pounds. <laughs> um, yeah. Now... And I add the other 20. Let's do, speaking of maybe that and then some, politicians constantly fodder for late-night comics. It'll never change. It's been going on well, for a long time, but the question is, and I find myself defending twice in one night, Chris Christie, does it ever go too far? Check out Letterman's spoof here on Chris Christie. Anybody seen uh, Governor Chris Christie? Whoa, what a guy. I mean, think about it. Wow. Over the weekend, over the weekend, the guy was on uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Big, big hit. Did you see him yesterday? He was testifying before a Senate subcommittee. Did you see uh, this? I did. We have exclusive footage. Oh. Here's Governor Chris Christie. <laughs> America are going to be the Republican governors. And, it, and one of the reasons why you have 30 Republican governors in America and why we're the only organization to add Republican strength, House lost members, Senate lost members, we lost the presidency, we went up from 29 to 30 Republican governors, is because people see us getting things done, so, like so, this. So, getting things done for people, and that's what we have to emphasize and talk about. I don't think this is a core philosophical examination we have to go through. What this is, is about doing our jobs. Okay. Um, a clever clip here, but my point is, um, we didn't like it, or some people didn't like it, certainly the governor didn't like it, when SNL were making blind cracks on David Patterson, right? I don't know. Uh, maybe Christie's fine with it. He laughs along with the fat jokes. And no, stuff. I, I don't think. On the inside, I don't think Governor Christie is really fine with it. I think he plays with it because he has no other choice. But you know why it goes too far? And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. What if we did a, a skit on David Letterman's troubles when he had those problems with, with those interns, uh, the sexual issues? Would he find that funny then? Would it be funny then, Mr. Letterman? I, th I think he would understand that you put yourself in the... No, in the he wouldn't understand. Yeah, I think he would. He wouldn't understand. I think, I think he would, because there, first of all... No, work, it's called preferential there, there, treatment. There were, there were comedy, it's called do as I say, not as I do. And there were stand-up comics who made those jokes. You understand that you put yourself in the line of fire, and what's good for the goose is good for the well, gander. Well, how many times, though, have we sat around this table and talked about bullying and just talking about weight issues and the impression that we're leaving on younger people? Like, I, if we're going to make that argument, then you have to make it universally. And, and you, know you can't be one way about one thing. Candy Crowley, when she did the debate, do you know how many people were struggling? You could see they wanted to make some uh, size or weight uh, joke or whatever, but they didn't want to go too far. I think there's a double standard, a guy and a woman. The bus driver that yep. experienced all that torture from the those bullying, kids. The bullying, absolutely. The, whoa, the whoa, woman, whoa, 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 whoa. the news there's huge, anchor. There's a huge difference, a the, huge difference okay, between the that, news bus, anchor between that, that the bus guys, driver and Candy Crowley. The news anchor that was the, someone wrote in and said that Wisconsin, making fun of her weight. Yeah. So it's there's, the same there, thing. There's a difference. If we're not there's a difference do it, between it's putting be when you put yourself in the public eye. When when Wait when a minute. What she's we in do, the public eye. No, the the, the news anchors. Yes, the, the Candy Crowley. Time. Yes, not the bus driver. We're there's all a guilty of what I'm about to say. Okay, I'm done it myself. When we're writing a headline, or we're making some comment, or we're coming up with a lower third that you see on your TV screen about Christie, a weighty issue, um, you know, or some other I can keep not too clever a pun here. I got to say, it, it's a cheap shot, and it has nothing to do with his effectiveness as a governor or not. And just because you run for office, and I'm not Pollyannish on this, I know you sign up for this, like you sign up for them going through your returns, you sign up for them uh, going through your personal life. It, it's part of it, I guess. But kids, the kids of politicians should be off limits, and if somebody doesn't have sight or somebody's heavy, and it should you know, be hypocritical. You can't feign, or you can't say you're outraged when it's done to one person and say it's okay when it's done to another. You don't think it's a cheap shot? I don't. Not if you're in the game. Not if you're willingly putting yourself so in the game. So if it was a woman governor that was that big and people would be outraged over it, but for him it's okay? I mean, I think people would find that in, in particularly poor taste, and I don't think it would right, go over that Right, but it should well. be for both. That's but my Elizabeth point. Warren, well, but you Elizabeth can, Warren but you packed can, on weight, but you, you can, like But you jokes? can't arbitrate taste. You can't say, well, this, this joke is in taste, but uh, these jokes about these people are. It's, it's just okay. on a per individual basis. We jumped to a break here. We've got some food thing going on. We gotta, <laughs> we're going to have a few tips for surviving Thanksgiving with the family. Stay with us.